Buenos días, buenas tardes. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Welcome Change. We are going to wait a few moments while everyone gets connected from different parts of the world. Hi, Zuso, how are you? Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to see you all again. If that's okay, we're going to get started. Hello and welcome everyone to our weekly news hour on Wednesdays, where we talk with social entrepreneurs from Ashoka and their work. Today we are going to talk with someone who promotes an ancient technique with more than 7,000 years in Spain and which is still nowadays one of the most useful tools to um, mitigate the effects of climate change and regenerate the lands, which is uh, pastoralism and extensive livestock farming. I am Alex Medjans. I am responsible for Ashoka's global strategy for planet and climate. And we are going to talk today with Jesus Garzón Suso for his friends. But before getting started, I'm going to make a little um, comment on logistics. First, we'd like to hear from you as we move along, so feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A section in Zoom, and we are going to try and answer all of them in the second part of the conversation. For those of you who don't speak Spanish, you can access simultaneous interpretation into English by using the interpretation button in the lower corner of your screen. If you need um, live translation in English, click the interpretation button to hear into English. And also for subtitles and captions, you can choose more and choose subtitles. It is very important for us that all of you around the world can follow this conversation. So these indications are going to be useful for all of you. I'm going to introduce now Jesús Garzón. Please, Suso, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we could um, define you as innovator, transhuman, a guardian of, the, of nature and environment, advocate for endangered species, and from uh, lately you have been assigned also as a social entrepreneur by Ashoka. You've been fighting for the last 60 years for the protection of nature. You're one of the most prominent figures uh, in Spain right now, and you've created uh, national parks like Mofraue and others. And for 30 years, you've started the recovery of transhumans and the drover's roads in Spain, and also influencing for the approval of the law of protection of the livestock trails in Spain, not only in Spain, but also you've put the topic on the European Union um, uh, agenda. Is that right? Have I missed something? Yes, that's, um, that's right. I've been raised in the country in the north of Spain, although I was born in Madrid and I lived in Madrid. But, but around the 50s, Madrid was a very rural place with a lot of open countryside, which luckily still is there. So for us, the community of Madrid is a priority, but above all, I don't think I've done a lot of important, very important things in life, but I've only, I've only tried to um, work for the conservation and protection of endangered species and the environment and species like the bears, the um, eagles, other uh, Iberian mammals. And that was what put me in total intimacy with shepherds and people who were living in the country. They were shepherds, I had to talk with them And once I, we made friends, they were my point of reference, my educators, my teachers. And that's why by the 
uh, late 80s, that was a crucial point in Spain. We had the first democratic elections and the introduction of Spain into the European Union and um, the extended participation into international projects. So I thought that it was important to prioritize pastoralism at the level of Spain and also at a world level because shepherds help, concert, uh, help um, preserve the environment. Now, please, could you tell us a little bit about what is uh, transhumans and why you've been um, into it for the last uh, 60 years? Well, I've uh, been in pastoralism and herding since uh, the year 92. That was the famous um, summit on the earth and environment in Rio de Janeiro and the importance of the um, uh, of the peoples or native peoples of every place was um, certified and it was important then to uh, preserve the um, ancient cultures because they had shown that it was uh, something sustainable to do. All of the rest was totally artificial, which could collapse at any time. On the other hand, the ancient cultures more or less 20% of the inhabitants, we are trying to, we are managing the 80% of the planet and the, in the case of the shepherds, more than 50%. So at that time in the year 92, at the summit in Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro which we had um, prepared extensively, that's when I um, started to work strongly for the conservation of pastoralism and herding. This is the itinerant um, herding and pastoralism. You are moving all the time every day so that the grazing ha can be distributed along the way and also the uh, manure from the animals can be dispersed along the way. It is important to point out that each a herd of 1,000 sheep uh, produce um, thousands of seeds and create and generate uh, tons of manure, all of which is important and necessary to preserve the biodiversity. And this is dispersed along the trail and the way on the migration of the herds. The pastoralism came from the movement of, of the natural and native herds of animals, of wild animals in different parts of the world, who used to move naturally from one part to the other, looking for fresher um, pastures in Asia, in the north of the northern hemisphere, like reindeer, for example, those were the culture of the north of um, Siberia. So we are a huge community of millions of people who are all doing the same thing, be it in the deserts of the Sahara, Sahara or the mountains of the Himalaya. We are all doing the same, getting up in the morning, taking care of the honey of the animals who are part of our family, feed them, if um, if there's not enough uh, food for the animal um, because of the climate, we have to store food for the other seasons. And that's what we do. For those of us who are not experts, help us connect all these concepts, please, that you are putting into this trajectory. You speak of the value of transhumans and pastoralism, the connection with the drovers' tra trails, extensive livestock farming, the, crea the creation of jobs. But there's also depopulation, right? And regeneration of the ecosystems and the natural um, vegetation. 
Can you tell us how all of these connects to each, uh, to each other? Spain is the only country in the world that has uh, preserved a protected network of roads, 125,000 um, kilometers of roads with thousands of hectares of, um, of land. And this has been protected since the 13th century. At that time, there was a big um, union of shepherds in Spain who got together to protect these natural trails and roads for the cattle because at that time, the wool from the uh, Merino ship was uh, the most important export uh, good in Spain. So the whole Iberian Peninsula is connected not on, only by highways, and railways, but also by a major network of cattle trails who allow that all Spanish shepherds can freely move around the territory. I think this is the great heritage and the great promise, the promise that Spain can um, make to the rest of the world, because if this law could be applied in the rest of the countries with pastoralism or nomad herding or transhuman herding. That is to say, the freedom of shepherds to move freely around the territory. The, that would be a great step to preserve the biodiversity and nature. I would not like now to go into detail and could you tell us about the strategies behind those achievements? You've influenced in terms of transhumans in uh, poli uh, public policies, you also promoted the fact that transhumans is now considered in, in natural, uh, immaterial, immaterial Mm, uh, cultural um, heritage by the UNESCO. And we'd like to know what strategies you've implied, you've applied to this so that other entrepreneurs can learn from these tricks, from this magic. Well, the magic is really done by the media because without the media, and without being able to raise awareness and communicate our work, this would be impossible. I couldn't have done anything at all. So the great change, the great strategy was show that we could go walking along the whole peninsula with huge herds of thousands of goats and sheep that had disappeared at the beginning of the 20th century due to the appearance of the railway. There was a revol revolution in the whole planet to move quickly. That was why by the end of the 18th century, um, the expansion of railway in the United States made big mammals disappear. This is something which is uh, totally normal for us, but at that point was a big revolution, which for shepherds implied the loss of their culture of walking the roads with the herds. So in 1992 at the Rio de Janeiro summit, I proposed to recover those um, drovers' roads and everyone thought that was crazy. And we had to show that it was something possible. So the hard work was to find some shepherd. We found uh, an old Spanish shepherd who was in his late 70s. And he wanted to collaborate with us on our project 
for four years and we went walking with the herds around Spain, around Spain through those um, cattle trails. And it was important that the media and the Spanish television in our country documented that journey. And that was broadcasted to millions of people and the protagonists were the shepherds with their uh, special and unique um, language and the protagonists were also the sheep and the dogs who defend the herd and also the neighbors of the of all the small towns who came out of their houses to salute the herds and who were um, so moved by the fact that they were seeing the herds going through their towns again. This was important to show that transhumans existed and it was fun and it was also necessary and it could also create jobs for the young people. And is in these la uh, late years of the 20th century, we've lost thousands of sheep due to um, ill policies and also families of shepherds have lost their income and their livelihood due to this fact. Could you tell us we are, what we are looking at in this picture? Well, this is our favorite herd with all the friends from the mountains who are um, accompanying us by walking through the Alcala street in Madrid. As you can see, all the, uh, the people were excited and they were trying to take pictures and talking to us and they were, they were saying, why don't you put um, fences so that the people don't get into the herds? Well, we said we want the people to be in contact with the animals, to touch them, to caress them. I'm there with my skin dried by the country wind and you can easily picture by seeing this image that a great European capital like Madrid, what it felt to have a huge herd of sheep going through their, its main avenue. That's the Puerta de Alcalá, which is a symbol in the city of Madrid, constructed by uh, Charles III, who discovered Pompeii. We are linking the whole international culture of the European and Asian uh, continent to the culture of the shepherds in Spain. Tell us about your key allies. You've mentioned the media, but I also know that you are able to um, link to, together different type of allies, right? What are the key people and movements? I've been always be very lucky with my friends. I've I struggled a lot with, in the European Union. I was in Extremadura, the director of the Environment Department, and I had participated in many international meetings in Brussels. And at that, uh, in those meetings, I always tried to inform and, commun and communicate about the importance of Spain in the rest of the continent. But however, however, Spain arrived to the Euro European Union at a certain point after many other um, countries. The, the ecological importance of Spain was um, really very, very important and significant. There are many species who migrate uh, in winter, but many others stay 
in uh, Spain because the climate is mild for those species. And if we didn't uh, do our, the right work to preserve the ecosystems in Spain, then the whole ecosystem and um, the biodiversity in the whole Europe would be endangered. Almost 30% of the Iberian Peninsula is protected by laws with almost 80% of the European bi biodiversity. And those personal relationship relationships made it possible that many, many of them who were part of significant institutions in Europe, foundations, zoos, research organizations, Switzerland groups, even though Switzerland was not at the European Union at that time, but all of them showed a great, um, uh, a great um, sensitivity towards biodiversity. And all of them promoted all my projects, including transhumans. In fact, by by 1992, for 20 years, the MAVA group supported me financially totally, so they were very important, along with the other um, groups. Tell us about the influence in, to the citizens, to the people in Spain. I am very interested in uh, in trying to understand how Ashoka's social entrepreneurs can make it possible for people who at the beginning might not be interested, make um, the movement to be involved. I would like to know about your tactics, your strategies to get uh, people involved into this um, struggles and work and projects. Well, it is very important to work at the level of childhood. Through transhumans, as I said before, we always visit the institutes and schools. Children are our best ambassadors because they um, talk to it to their parents and grandparents and they are activating uh, knowledge in the elder that maybe had been forgotten because most of the families have had some uh, member, maybe past member or some relationship with shepherds or someone related to the livestock farming. So it, they are important to, inf to influence the whole population uh, from their families in the promotion of transhumans. So the collaboration with kindergarten, with schools, with kids and their parents is very important. As well as the team in Ashoka that you've uh, organized several visits to our foundation. The children contribute to the promotion of this interest. And then there are the institutes where are they are, there are young people who can work in the country and also universities. Unfortunately, there is a lot of unemployment, unemployment in Spain for the young people. So we are offering this job as volunteers, collaborating with our herds. They can spend the months of transhumans going around Spain and also the summer months by collaborating with the shepherds. That is creating a lot of participation in the young group. So the second, second generation, maybe the daughters of or granddaughters of the shepherds are also working with us now. So this is a chain, I think, that is not going to be broken as, and is going to be maintained. 
our last important activity in this sense has been talking with the Minister of Culture of our government and our president, write a letter to the minister so that before the next elections at the level of the municipality in May, we can establish a connection throughout all the ministries and government organizations to give a sole response at a national level to uh, avoid unemployment and give offer some kind of solution. Suso, I would like to re to pass you a question from the audience. From the audience, at what time of your life? your life helped you realize about the importance of uh, of this um, work that you're that you are doing when was it that you yet your mind made a click at one time around my young years we were going walking along the country and all of us kids were enjoying the games with the family and the journey but at one time i stayed behind and for let's say half an hour i got separated from the family and at that time it was when i realized that we are part of nature the world around me started to be filled with life there were the frogs in the river. They were singing around me because I was still. There were snakes who were trying to catch the frogs. The river was filled of insects and beautiful birds. And that was a magical moment. I can say that, that that was the moment when I said, I want to live in the countryside all my life and I have to do it alone. Because if I go along with people, we are talking and I may got distracted. But if I am alone, I am part of nature. I am not a stranger to nature. From that time on, I've been alone with my herds sometimes with the shepherds, but I don't stop being alone because even though I may be accompanied by the shepherds, I feel one with nature. What can we learn from the animal world, Suso? What do you think it is important to remember in our human world from the animals if we let ourselves be guided by the animals? One song says, I, wa I want to be civilized like animals. We are animals too. We have our brothers, the chimpanzee, the orangutan, the monkeys. The orangutan right now is endangered because we are threatening um, its, its native areas. Hunters, ancient hunters, uh, hunters were very respectful of their prey or and of the animals, and they um, they were very respectful of the animals. They tried to preserve the ecosystems and habitats. They respected the um, the natural um, cycles of every species and of the, of nature in general. This current moment marks a crisis for the climate change, but livestock farming can contribute to uh, cool down the planet because the herds are creating um, carbon fixing because with their manure are creating soil. 
and putting on centimeters of soil every year, all of that is organic um, matter. So we are being able to preserve biodiversity and tons of and square meters of uh, of terrain because every square meter of terrain has a huge biodiversity of vegetables seeds and animals the deserts the mountains the savannas if we could um, replicate this experience in all of those places, it would be magical and the, 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 the impact would be very important with the help of Ashoka, of course. I always surprise myself when we think about environmental innovation, we tend to think of technology, but sometimes it is not necessary to think of technology and we have to go back to ancient wisdom yes a tree is a miracle of nature because it has the capacity to absorb humidity nut nutrients from the rock and through the photosynthesis they create seeds fruits giant trees different types of different types of vegetations and at the same time, the forests, the meadows. Meadows can be as important as forests. And we are campaigning now so that meadows are not uh, forestated because they have to be preserved as they naturally are. Thank you very much, Suso. I'd like to keep in my mind that image of yourself when you were so young and uh, distancing yourself from your family and understanding the connection with nature. It really moves me. Thank you for all the audience to uh, be with us today. We are going to, you are going to receive shortly an email link to um, highlight and browse uh, um, this conversation and I hope you will be with us next time. Welcome Change uh, is a weekly series about the future we want to live and in the role we can all play with it. Have good days all of you. Thank you Ashoka and good day for all of you. Happy year for all of you.